I'm flattered that people would put Utah on the list, uh, certainly on a VP list. Um, you know, it's really, it's always really flattering when, when people would consider you. Uh, but, you know, this, what I'm doing in my job as a representative right now is not just the job for me. I mean, these are my neighbors. These are people that, are, they're like, they're my friends. Their issues are my issues, and I feel a deep connection with the people that I represent. I certainly don't want to abandon my job. I think that there's so much, um, so many solutions are coming from Utah, and we're highlighting Utah in a way that's, that's really significant, and I want to continue to do that and move the needle. We probably ought to remind everybody that this is not Mr. Trump himself coming up with some kind of a short list. This is speculation that is coming out from the Washington yeah. Post. And I'm I'm looking at the 19, quote, insiders, and then I'm looking at the 16 outsiders that uh, theoretically could be uh, Mr. Trump's uh, running mate. And uh, there, it's quite an impressive list, though. I, you know, it's, uh, when I'm looking at, uh, say, for example, on the insiders, I mean, there are senators, there are governors, there are all kinds of people on this list. And it's, it's a nice list to be on, at least the company you're keeping here. Right. Condoleezza Rice is on that list. There's yeah. Several people are on that list, which, you know, that just says, you know, we're, we're, people are noticing what we're doing, and that's what we set out to do. Uh, make sure we put Utah on the map and let people know what we're doing in the state of Utah and how Utah is effective. And that's resonating. And I'm, and I'm proud of our state. I'm proud of what we represent. And I'm, I'm just honored to be a representative of, of Utah. Now, here's a little bit of a stickier question. I've noticed that mm-hmm. Mike Lee has not uh, endorsed nor indicated that he would vote for Donald Trump. And uh, I have not heard anything from your camp either, whether you will vote for him or whether you would ultimately endorse him. Some of the uh, lackluster endorsements have been incredible. Some of the unendorsements have been very dramatic. Some of the notable Republicans who are even serving in public office right now who have such reservations, they are disaffiliating and declaring themselves to be independents. So while it's awfully nice to be considered, in this case, by the Washington Post to be a possibility, what about the concept at its core of serving as Donald Trump's uh, vice president? As you've already indicated, this is not your priority. This is not what you're working for. But what about Donald Trump? What about the Trump factor this time around, Mia? Well, uh, again, this is uh, what I don't like is getting pulled into negative drama of it all. I mean, there's so much to accomplish. I mean, you just listen to what's happening in, in Tel Aviv, and the threat of terrorism is very real and, and apparent. And I just, I, I have to tell you, it just seems juvenile to me, and I just don't want to get caught up in that negative drama that's going on. Um, so that those things would have to be addressed. I mean, those are we have an opportunity here, as, as we see the two uh, presidential candidates, to not just blindly follow one just because they have um, a an R behind their name, but we, we need to start looking at issues and, and really start having these discussions as to see who actually has a positive agenda so that people feel like they have some control over their lives so that people feel like they've got hope in their country. Um, we need to build that sense of patriotism and get people really involved in the process. Um, there's a lot of frustration that's out there. And, you know, we've got to we've got to get people involved in the process again. So yeah. the concept of that, I, I want to be part of a positive agenda. I want to be part of a concept and part of a plan that uh, uh, that is a positive plan that's going to move people forward that's going to get people involved in the legislative process we can't we can't sit back and trust washington to just fix all of our problems i think you've hit on something so important and it's something that has honestly made me heart sick and you know at some point you know bread and circuses i suppose becomes a little bit entertaining but every political science 101 class will talk about the decline of great great nations and great great systems when the people can be hoodwinked when they are simply kept fat and sassy, and completely entertained, bread and circuses. And so far in this election, Mia, I honestly feel like I have just been watching a circus, and I am dying for some substance. I, when, when I use the word heartsick, I do not say that lightly. I am a proud Republican, but I have heard some of the most notable Republicans in our state and if I mention names, you would recognize them immediately who said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, even somebody of Mitt Romney's stature said, I cannot vote for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. I'm waiting for some meat here. 
I don't want bread and circuses. I want solutions. You know, and I think the biggest, this is, this is the solution. You know, I've always told people that this is what, what the result of what's happening right now is we've trusted Washington to fix problems for us. People have kind of sat back and said, you know, we, we, have, we have representatives, we're going to let them do, we're going to let them do their job. The problem is the representatives here can't do their job because you've got all of these regulatory agencies that are pretty much making laws and making rules outside of Congress. People have got to be able to author their lives. If you're not standing up, if you're not making the decisions, then you run the risk of someone inferior to you doing it for you, which is why I've introduced the one subject at a time bill. Because it, it's it that's one of the that's one of the areas that you know you've got all of these big bills passed at the eleventh hour. We're always legislating on a fiscal cliff, and uh, you know you've got all these pet projects that are that are being passed with must, must pass bills. Um, you've got the Article One project that I think is important that you know gives Congress their power back and allows people to be part of that legislative process. Um, those are the things that I really think will move the needle. That way, we are not uh, subjects to the political environment. I think that if we give people back their power, then it doesn't matter who is president. We'll be able to have a say and we'll be able to counteract any negative um, aspects that come out of the administration or even in um, the, the uh, members of Congress themselves. Me, I really appreciate you joining us today. And just a, a quick final question, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot here and not trying to corner <laughs> you into something, but because people are asking me, they're saying, Doug, what are you going to do? You know, are you going to vote for Hillary Clinton? Are you going to vote for Donald Trump? And I honestly, I, I can't fathom myself voting for either one of them. If there's anything that maybe could tilt the scale, uh, you know, I, I, I keep praying for something significantly different. The Supreme Court nominations are resonating with me, but I honestly don't know, nor do I trust Mr. Trump on what he would even do in that case. What are you going to do? I can tell you this. Um, I, I, can, there's, I have a big problem with dishonesty with the American people. Um, that's the problem I have with Hillary Clinton. Um, it's a proven fact that she was dishonest with the American people. We have uh, American soldiers that are dead and no accountability for it. It literally seared my soul um, when I go into an administrative brief briefing and they are being dishonest with members of Congress. I have a problem with that. And so I know what Hillary is going to do, and I cannot. I cannot do it. I will not have another, um, you know, eight years or four years of policies that have really hurt us. I do not yet know um, what Donald Trump is going to do. Um, and, and I hope that we can get to the bottom of it. I hope we can get some solid policy because right now I just, I'm sitting back and it's given me the opportunity to be honest with you, given me the opportunity to just sit, hunker down and focus on the fourth district and the needs of my constituents. There's a lot of work that is left to be done here in the 4th District, I'm going to just come up with solutions, continue to do my job, and move the needle here. 